Well, Virginia is far more competitive than any of the pundits would, would have believed. What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American, back again with a new video, and I hope everyone is having a great day. I am having a great day myself. And before we get into it, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, and of course, consider joining the channel today. Again, these are all great ways to support the daily content, but enough of the promotional stuff, because it appears that Donald Trump is officially making a play for Virginia. And this isn't a rumor, not speculation, it is official. He will be holding a rally in Virginia tomorrow. And I know this sounds crazy because back in 2020, Virginia was a Biden plus 10 state. Not Biden plus 2, not plus 3, no. Biden plus 10. And compared to 2016, that was a huge shift to Biden. That was like a, a 4 to 5 point shift in just 4 years. And most people thought... All right, it's over. We're not going to win Virginia. It's a Democrat state now, just like Colorado is. It's over. There's no pathway here because Democrats are going to keep going up and up and up in Virginia because, well, you got Fairfax, Loudoun County, Prince William, you know, the swamp. The suburbs of the swamp were making Virginia a Democrat state. And it really seemed like after 2020, it was over in Virginia. Just 20 years ago, it was a Republican state. But now... It looked like it was a Democrat stronghold, but that all changed in 2021, which by the way, has everyone just forgotten about 2021 and even 2022? Because in 21, Republicans had a resurgence in Virginia. And ever since 2021, it seems like Republicans have been gaining momentum in Virginia, whether it was winning the governorship, whether it was barely losing the legislature in 2023. And now it looks like at the presidential level, Trump has a pathway in Virginia. And I know that sounds crazy, but with how things have been trending in Virginia, is it really crazy to suggest that in a best case scenario, Trump could maybe flip Virginia? I know it's very unlikely, but it seems like the Trump campaign, they believe at the bare minimum, they have a pathway in Virginia. Hell, the Harris campaign, they're pulling money out of North Carolina and supposedly, they're spending that money on Virginia. If Harris was really winning Virginia by 10 to 15 points or whatever Democrats claim she's going to win the Commonwealth by, why the hell would both campaigns, not just the Trump campaign, but even the Harris campaign, they're both spending time and money into Virginia? Why? Because they have private polling that suggests that Trump's in a good position to possibly win Virginia. That doesn't mean he's for sure going to win it. It just means that the private polling, which, not the fake ones, not the ones that mysteriously leak every five seconds, the actual private polling that both campaigns conduct, they have to be accurate. They're not bullshit for fundraising. No, these numbers are real. And supposedly, things are looking so bad for Harris that they had to defend Virginia. Not target North Carolina, not target Georgia. Supposedly, numbers are looking so bad, they have to defend even Virginia. Which is crazy to say, but that's what both campaigns are doing. Whether it's spending money on ads or the Trump campaign just decided, you know what, let's do a last second rally in Virginia. Now, I know it sounds crazy to suggest that Trump could maybe pull off the upset, but there are metrics out there to indicate maybe Virginia's in play. Maybe the Trump campaign is onto something and the Harris campaign, they're realizing they might have a big problem in the Commonwealth. Look at the early voting, which these numbers are slightly out of date. I believe there are updated numbers and supposedly it got even worse for Democrats. But either way, Republicans right now make up 41% of the early vote. 41%. Compare that to 2022 2021, 2023, this is the highest Republicans have ever been of the early vote. Even in 2021, when they won the governorship, they were, they were barely 37% of the early vote. That's not a misquote. They weren't even at 38% of the early vote. Same thing in 2022. In 2023, Republicans, they did crack 39%, but even back then, they weren't 41% like they are right now. And you look at who's actually voting, 
Republicans are getting their low propensity voters out to vote. Look at this. Republicans, they have 39,000 low propensity voters that have voted early, while Democrats, they only have 23,000 low propensity voters. This usually never happens. Usually Democrats in every state, they have this huge advantage with low propensity voters. Right now, they don't. In fact, you could argue old Democrats are doing in the early vote in Virginia or cannibalizing their high propensity voters. That's all they're doing. That, that's all the Democrat Party in Virginia is doing. They're getting their high propensity voters out to vote early, which is not good because these people were going to vote anyways on election day. And instead of targeting the low propensity voters that may not even vote, now you don't even know if they're actually going to vote or not. The Republican Party, meanwhile, they're actually banking on these low propensity voters voting early. But for whatever reason, Democrats thought, hmm, let's ignore the low propensity voter and instead focus everything on these high propensity voters. They're going to vote no matter what, which basically means they're the ones cannibalizing their election day vote, while Republicans, they have a lot of high propensity voters ready to vote on election day. And if Republicans really have the surge of high propensity voters on election day, Harris is in deep trouble. I mean, we're talking about a complete disaster because her campaign has already used up a bunch of their high propensity voters anyways. And if they're voting early, well, who's going to vote on election day? Are you really going to bank on low propensity voters that may vote? Some of them might. But with the early vote, you know for a fact that these people are voting. But now. Will they even vote? That's a big question that Democrats, I think, got to ask themselves. Are these people going to really vote or are they not going to vote? Now, with Virginia, we do also got some polling, which is kind of all over the place. You look at Rasmussen, they have Trump losing Virginia by only two points. That's within the margin of error. That's statistical noise. At the same time, however, you have Roanoke College that finds Harris up by 10. Even the Washington Post, they found it only Harris plus six. So these are three separate polls in the, roughly the same time frame, and they have three different results. Roanoke College has Harris winning by the same margin as Biden did. The Washington Post has a four to five point shift, while Rasmussen found a eight point shift in Virginia. And you average it all out right now in the RCP average, it's roughly Harris plus six. Yeah, right on the RCP average, you, it's roughly Harris plus six. And people might say, well, that's proof that Virginia is not going to have this big shift to the right and it's all copium by Republicans, which, okay, it may not shift eight points to the right. Fine, it may not shift 10 points. I get that. But even if it's only a four to five point shift in Virginia, which by the way, that, that's what the Washington Post is showing. The Washington Post is showing a four to five point shift in Virginia. If that's the consensus, like let's say Trump is doing only four to five points, but only, yeah, that, that's funny to say, but if it's really a four to five point shift in Virginia, Harris is in deep trouble because if he's doing four to five points better in Virginia, what do you think's happening in North Carolina? What do you think's happening in say Georgia? What do you think's happening in Arizona? Which by the way, the early vote in all these states, they look horrible. Horrible for Dems. Same thing in Nevada. He doesn't need Virginia. That, that's not the whole point. The fact is, if Trump is doing sl even slightly better in the Commonwealth, he's probably sweeping the rest of the Sun Belt. More than likely, he's up in Pennsylvania. He's probably up in Michigan and Wisconsin. That's why it's a big deal that Trump is, at the bare minimum, doing four to five points better, except for Roanoke College, which I don't get how you found Harris plus 10. Is it possible? I guess. But I, I highly doubt it's going to be Harris plus 10. When everyone else is showing Harris plus 2, Harris plus 4, even both campaigns, they believe it's within 5 points. So Roanoke College could technically be right, but when everyone, everyone else is saying that Trump is going to be within like 4 to 5 points, well, they could be right, but I'm going to say... Maybe Rasmussen and Washington Post, they're roughly in the correct range of Harris plus two or three to Harris plus five or six. 
Plus, with just the early vote alone, how can you really say that there's going to be no shift in Virginia? I mean, it's a, it's D plus 17, which compared to 2021, 2022, and 2023, which already those were actually pretty good years for Republicans in the Commonwealth. Well, you're talking about a more Republican environment than any of those years, which already those were pretty good years for Republicans. Even 2023, where, yeah, they lost the legislator, but that was because of the map they got, which was a big gerrymander. But either way, Republicans had a pretty damn good year in 23. Yet Republicans right now are showing their best early vote in the last five years. Is it possible that's all fluke? I guess. But right now, when you just look at even some of the polls and the early voting, it looks like at the bare minimum, it's going to be a four to five point shift, not a one point shift and not just no shift at all. I mean, no shift whatsoever is not going to happen. I just don't think it can because the early vote's more Republican. Republicans really believe they have a chance to at least do better here. For crying out loud, Glenn Youngkin, whether it was on national TV or in private conversations, was saying, hey, Virginia is a lot closer than a lot of people expect it to be. Our numbers show a very close race compared to 2020, and we believe there is a pathway here. Now, if Trump were to actually flip Virginia, like let's say by some miracle he wins Virginia, at this point, it's over for Harris because Harris would need to win not just the Rust Belt, like she could win Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. She needs to win Arizona and Nevada. She needs to win all these states just to barely win. Not even Nevada is enough to get over the hump. She needs Nevada and Arizona. And I really believe this is the main reason the Trump campaign, they're doing a quick pit stop in Virginia, doing a quick pit stop in New Mexico. This is just an emergency scenario. Like, let's say by some miracle, Republicans actually win Virginia or even New Mexico. If they win one of these two states, like I'm saying Virginia's more likely, but if they were to win Virginia just because they did one rally there, which I'm not saying that's going to happen, but in that scenario... Even if something crazy happens in the Rust Belt and in even Nevada or even Arizona, Trump still wins. Trump would still be at 270, barely, but he would still be barely at 270. And that's enough for him to win. That's why I really believe the Trump campaign. They're just doing one quick pit stop in Virginia and New Mexico. Like, people are making a big deal about, oh, Trump is doing a rally in New Mexico and in Virginia. That's a waste of time. Well, yeah, I could see on paper that would be seen as a big waste of time, but people got to understand that the Trump campaign, even the Harris campaign, they're starting to really believe that Trump's got this. And Trump is doing other rallies, not just in Virginia, New Mexico. He's doing events in Wisconsin, Nevada, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. It's not just, oh, he's in Virginia and that's it. No, he's doing one event in each state, which you could argue the only reason he's doing an event in each state is, well, he's traveling to the other swing states like Nevada, for example. Like, if you're going through New Mexico anyways, why not do a quick pit stop here? Our, our own polling suggests that we could actually pull off a big upset here. It's unlikely, but maybe let's try something. Why not? We have nothing to lose. If we're going to Nevada anyways, just do a quick pit stop in New Mexico for like an hour and then do your rally in Las Vegas or whatever. Same thing with Virginia. You're doing a quick rally in Pennsylvania or North Carolina? Well, we're traveling through the state anyways. Just do a quick pit stop. So that's why I don't have a big problem with Trump doing a rally in Virginia or even New Mexico. Now, if he was just sitting in Virginia, New Mexico, and that's it, I would have a problem with that. But it's not like he's just sitting there and doing only events in Arizona, in Virginia, in New York. No, he's doing other events. People are making it sound like he's just stuck in one state. He's not. He's campaigning everywhere. He's just doing a quick pit stop in a state that maybe he wants to win. Or he wants to help in trying to win the popular vote. So try to run up your numbers in New Mexico, in Virginia. So even if you win, if, even if you lose both of those states, if you lose them by only like five points or whatever, that could help you in trying to win the popular vote, which I still think that's another big reason Trump's campaigning in Virginia, New York, New Mexico. He wants to win the popular vote. And the way to win the popular vote is, well, campaigning in usually Democrat areas and trying to convince people to vote for you. 
That's why Trump is another reason he's in these states. He wants to make sure he wins both the Electoral College and the popular vote so Democrats can't say, well, he didn't actually win the election. He only won the Electoral College. He's trying to prevent that from happening. But we'll see what happens. Maybe Trump is onto something and he flips Virginia and maybe pulls off the upset in New Mexico. But this doesn't mean to get complacent. It's We still got to get out and vote. No matter what happens in Virginia and New Mexico, get out and vote for Trump. Do not get complacent. Don't think, oh, we're for sure going to win in a landslide. I'm not going to vote. Don't do that. Get out and vote. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. If you guys didn't enjoy, smash the like button down below. Subscribe. Share with your friends. Hit that little bell. Follow the social media accounts in the description down below. And, of course, join the channel today. Godspeed to all of you.